Hey YouTube cosplayers! Okay, so this is the hair dyeing video you've been waiting for. So since my last RIT dyeing video, I've been getting a ton of questions about dyeing my wigs with RIT dye. And that's really cool because I'm so glad that you guys found that video useful and that I could help some of you. Reading the comments has been so amazing and sometimes you guys don't even know how much you're just making my day with your compliments and the really nice things that you've been saying. So thank you for that. One of the most asked questions that I've received is using RIT dye on curly hair or curly wigs. And I actually don't know because I've never dyed any synthetic curly wigs with RIT dye. So I thought we would take a minute to do another video so that we could demonstrate how RIT dye will affect a curly synthetic wig. Okay, but first let's go over some basics. Okay, I have a couple disclaimers. I do not work for RIT dye. I am not sponsored to or paid to do these videos. I'm a cosplayer. We love finding new ways to do things to improve our cosplays. So what had happened was I needed a different color wig than what I had and I decided to do some experiments to see if it would work after reading that you could potentially dye a wig with RIT dye. And so the wig that I'm wearing right now is actually the wig that started it all. <laughs> so in this video, I thought that I would dress up for you guys in my casual Raven cosplay so that you could see in person the wig. And this was just purple RIT dye, synthetic and that's what I used. Um, you can see it in the previous video and I will put that in the card up here and if you wanna go back and watch that, you can. This video, however, is about curly synthetic hair. Oh, and I should add that all the products and everything that you see in this video was purchased by me with my own money and with the intent to answer your questions. <laughs> I have another disclaimer for you. I am a cosplayer, I am an artist, and I'm a bit quirky. What I am not, however, is a hair dyeing professional. I am also not a professional or expert on RIT dye. There's a science to wig making, there is a science to the whole dyeing process, I'm sure, but I'm not a scientist, although I do play one at conventions. <laughs> Either way, science is real and all that jazz. So there are some things that you should know about RIT dye and using RIT dye on synthetic wigs. I have tried to answer all those questions in a separate video for you that I will put in the card right here, in the description box, and at the end of the video. I do hope, however, that you will pause this video right here and go on to watch the basic what you should know about RIT dye video first before coming back to this video so that you kind of have a basic knowledge of what we're talking about. If I use terms and things and forget to define them. Plus there are really cute pictures of anime characters in that video. <laughs> the context is using RIT dye to dye your synthetic wigs for cosplay. I know that I keep saying for cosplay, for cosplay, for cosplay, but I have to reiterate that this channel is a cosplay channel and the reason that I dye my wigs is solely for cosplay purposes. You can do it for everyday use of course and I hope that I'm helping people who want to dye their wigs when they can't find the colors that they need, but I I'm a cosplayer first and foremost. So, 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 so. You should put a needle on the screen whenever you say so in the video. <laughs> Shut up. So why curly hair? Well, this video came highly requested several times and your curiosity actually made me curious. And so I was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I dyed a curly hair wig, of course synthetic, and that was that, it became a video. So what I did was I purchased some curly hair and I purchased some curled hair and we'll talk about the differences in a minute so that we could try dyeing the curly wig or the curly synthetic hair to see if it was affected in any way by the RIT dye and or the hot water. The thing is dyeing a straight wig like this one is pretty easy because it requires hot water and all you have to do is pour the dye in there after you've prepared the water and allowed it to get to an almost boiling point and then put the hair in there, stir it up, agitate it a little bit and then take it out when you reach the color shade that you want. With curly hair, however, there are some things to be considered. It may not be so easy because the temperatures for the water that you need are, and hold on, let me get my trusty notes here. 
180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 82 to 104 degrees for my Celsius watchers. And with water that hot, the curl pattern, of course, may be disturbed or permanently altered. Um, that's because boiling water or water at a boiling point can straighten any curly wig and even real curly hair. So for the purposes of this video, we need to know three things. First, can you dye curly synthetic hair at the temperature stated in Ritz directions without altering the curl pattern? Number two, if not, can you dye curly synthetic hair in warm water and still get the same results, the same color results that is? And number three, are different types of curly hair affected differently by the water temperature? Very curly hair, for instance, versus maybe just wavy hair or curled hair. I'm dyeing this hair for you straight out of the package. I haven't done a test run before and I'm a little nervous because <laughs> I'm doing this right here with you guys. Of course, I'm gonna edit the video, but I'm not going to edit the results. Here's what we're working with for this video. I purchased synthetic hair clips or pieces for this video. Video. So we won't be working with an entire wig only because I didn't want to spend the money to get an entire wig and then have the possibility of uh, ruining a curly wig. So I thought that the clips that you can purchase and kind of put in your own hair, I thought that would be a great way to see how the water and the dye would affect the curls on these clips. It's the same type of hair just in a smaller area. So the texture of this particular hair that I purchased is fine or silky. Both types of curls for this video are going to be blonde. It will just be easier to see the results. I also have some RIT dye and this is actually the dye that's left over from this wig because it doesn't really require a whole lot and so I decided that we would go with purple because purple. <laughs> some other things you will need if you want to try this at home, a pot, and I go over the kinds of pots and utensils that you can and can't or should and shouldn't use in my informational video, again, right here. And I'm just going to use the same pot that I use for all of my dyeing adventures because I'm a creature of habit. You will probably need a bowl if you want. I prefer using bowls than dipping my hair into the sink because something about the hair kind of lingering over over the drain that makes me nervous. So I wash my hair in a bowl so that I can't accidentally get the hair down the drain. I'm a klutz, I don't know what else to say. You'll need a towel. I have an old hair towel that I use for dyeing both my real hair and my wigs. So that works perfectly for me. If you get it stained, you don't have to worry about it if it's not one of your good guest room towels. And maybe a head wig if you wanna dry your wig on a head wig, um, head mannequin, wig head, oh my God. Either way, you don't have to have one of these. I have one because I like them and they, they're very useful for me, but you can always flat dry your wigs um, on a towel or on a table. I usually turn the fan on when I do that so that it dries faster, but either way, you need a towel, but you don't have to have the wig head. So a quick note about kinky curly hair versus curly hair. And I want to make this distinction because I probably will have some of you that are watching for some different types of textures. Um, kinky curly hair is this kind of hair. And it's the hair that grows out of my head naturally. Again, I have natural hair, which is this kind of hair, the hair that has not been altered chemically by a relaxer or a perm or a curly perm for those of you who may use curly perms. Um, kinky curly hair wigs or synthetic hair, they're going to come in dark colors. I found this in red for a Pamela Isley cosplay that I did. I also found it in a very dark purple. That's about all. You will not find these kinky curly textured wigs in blonde or even light brown. Um, and so we're not going to talk about dyeing this kind of wig because it's already dark. It's going to be harder to dye. So kinky curly hair, versus curly hair, which is this. And you can see the difference, I hope. Also, most curly synthetic hair or curly hair wigs are going to come in a texture that closely resembles white hair or biracial hair. And by that, I mean not the kinky curly textured hair. And so it will be a little softer, a little bit silkier. The curls will be looser, that's what we call them. I have naturally tight curls, that's kinky curly hair. This is a loose curl, so it's basically a curly hair. A curly hair. Yeah, we're gonna stick with that. This is just very basic, and most wigs and synthetic hair are going to be very generalized and very basic and often stereotypical. <laughs> 
right, so that's enough talking because I do enough of that in my other video. Let's dye some hair. Hello, voiceover me here. So I've got three pieces of hair for each of the water temperatures. And I'm gonna start with a light wash and rinse. So I'm filling the bowl with coconut shampoo from Suave. You can use detergent if you want on your synthetic hair, but I use this shampoo, it's really inexpensive and I can get it in big bottles and it lasts me a pretty long time. So as you can see, I'm washing the hair really carefully. I'm just dipping it in there and then squeezing out the soap water just to kind of get the film off of the top. Uh, I don't want to disturb the curls in any of these pieces of hair, so I'm, I am being really careful with it. And when I'm done with that, um, each of the pieces of hair will get washed and then I'll empty the bowl and put clean water in it. And as you'll see in the next clip, I am just going to rinse the hair. So I'm going to dip it in and just squeeze it out the same way that I did with the shampoo so I can make sure to get all of the soapy film off of it. And if there's any tangling, I'm going to just try to run my fingers carefully through it and um, salvage it the best way that I can. But the hair did pretty well. It's pretty soft and silky so it didn't tangle too easily. Uh, if you're using clips, it does kind of get caught on the clips sometimes. but that is to be expected. So I'm just rinsing each of the pieces of hair. Okay, so I am filling up this bowl with um, warm water and it is mainly warm, more towards kind of the hot warm side, less lukewarm. And while that's filling up, I am boiling this water over here and we're gonna stick this, this what, doohickey thing in here. I call it the temperature goober. Aren't you gonna need this? Oh, you have a goober. Give it. Whoop, whoop, wait, no, not so fast. He called it an override key. There's always a bypass key, a virus key, a who cares key I can never remember, so I always call it a goober. Give it. So we are passing 180. And we are well on our way to 200 while that bowl is filling up. So I think it's good enough to take off the stove and we're gonna take it to the table. Don't forget your gloves. And now I've labeled each of the bowls of water so that we can remember which is which throughout this process. And I'm just going to add the dye to each bowl and stir carefully. I'm starting with just a little bit of dye, probably around two tablespoons worth. I don't wanna to put too much in there simply because these are just pieces of hair and we're doing a test and I don't wanna waste the RIT dye. But you will determine how much dye you need based off of the measurements that they give you on the RIT website. And also you can use your own eye and test the strands of hair before putting your own wig in there just to see what the color deposit looks like. And so I'm just stirring the water in there and uh, making sure that the RIT dye is mixed pretty carefully. And you'll see that I'm going to go back and add a little bit more RIT dye because I want to make sure we can see the color when we're done. So let's start with the hottest water. This is the boiled water and we've got it to temperature and I'm just sitting the hair in there. I'm wiggling it so that the water can weigh the hair down and allow it to sink on its own but you'll see that I have to use the spoons here in a minute to kind of push it down to make sure that it's completely submerged in the water. Now for the warm water. And now for the cool water. Okay, I, I really feel like Goldilocks here, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> So 
So because the hair is a blonde color and it's just an example and we're just kind of doing this uh, as a test, I don't think we'll need to leave the hair in as long. However, we should test it after 10 minutes to see what we have since this is the minimum time given by RIT on their website. Polyester does require more time, nylon a lot less. Since wigs are generally a mixture of all of them, then you just kind of determine by lifting it out and looking at the color deposit to see what you have left. So I do end up stirring, I think, twice during the 10 minutes. Um, and as you can see, I'm trying to stir really, really carefully so that I don't disturb the curls. I was really concerned with the curl pattern and not getting it too frizzy. Um, but I do want to stir it just to agitate it a bit because those are in the directions. So now five, four, three, two, one second left. <laughs> and now we are going to take the hair out. And as I'm taking the hair out in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this is not what I expected. Um, but we really can't make a determination until we rinse the hair. Sometimes the color will stick onto the hair until you actually go to rinse it out. And so I'm going to lay it on a towel. Um, that's what the towel is off camera. And I'm going to then show you guys how it looks. Um, but taking it out was kind of a revelation. Uh, a premiere revelation I guess for lack of a better term because the results did they weren't really what I thought they would be uh, neither good nor bad just different All right guys, so initially, right out of the pot before I even go to rinse the hair, I've pulled it straight out and this bowl here had the warm water and that's the result that we get with the purple RIT dye. This pot had the boiling water, the 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and this is the result that we get right out of the water before I rinse it. And this is the bowl that had the cold water, just cold faucet water, nothing else. And these are the results that we get from those. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and rinse the hair and I'm going to rinse it in warm water and then turn it gradually cold and then I'm going to um, lightly wash the hair with detergent and that's what the instructions say and then I'm going to wrap it in the towel and I'll bring it back for you guys to see the end results. Alright guys so as for the reveal here we are. For the most part I'm completely surprised by these results. So um, this would be the hair that we dipped into the warm water and I don't know if you can see here that the clip part of the hair right here is purple. It's a darker purple, the same with this one. Like this wasn't, it didn't wash out, it is still purple. However, the, the hair completely washed out once you rinsed it and washed it with detergent. And so any purple that was in there almost completely washed out. There are a couple of spots like here and here where you can see um, a little bit of color maybe, but for the most part, not really. It didn't even touch it. Uh, this side here is the cold water and it's exactly what I expected uh, that it didn't even turn the hair at all. However, a little surprising is the same thing with these clippy parts up here or the, uh, what do you call these? The goobers. That's what we're calling them, the clip goobers. But they turned purple as well, just not as dark as the warm side. And so 
I wasn't surprised by this at all. It didn't pick up any color. It just washed completely off like there was some kind of protective coating over it. This in the middle is the actual boiling water, which is how you're supposed to dye your wigs and your synthetic hair when you're using RIT dye. Um, as you can see, the curl pattern is completely unaltered um, for both of them. They're both exactly the way that we found them. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm completely surprised by that. If you compare them side by side, they're the same exact texture. I didn't put a lot of the purple in it, and so it looks just like the bottle. <laughs> it's the exact shade of the bottle. And yeah, these are the results. And again, I'm, I'm just really blown away by how the hot water or the boiling water didn't even touch the curl pattern. So that was cool, right? I do hope that it answered some of your questions. I know that it definitely answered some of mine, although I am still completely surprised by the results of that. Um, it's good to know. So for the most part, if you want to dye a curly wig, uh, synthetic with the RIT synthetic dye, then you should be okay. It shouldn't alter the curl pattern, um, at least not too much, depending on the type of curl. You do have to keep in mind though that wigs are gonna be different they're gonna be made differently. The textures are gonna be a little bit different. These curl patterns were a little silkier, and by that I mean they're very soft to the touch. As you can see, they didn't get tangled too much, although there was a bit of frizz. There may be some wigs that are made with a different blend of materials. Some may have more nylon, some may have more polyester. Um, the all polyester wigs are going to be a little rougher. Uh, they're going to be a little more cheaply made and probably less expensive. And so those wigs are going to probably require more dye and um, I can't say for certain whether the curl pattern will be altered. But from doing this test, I do know that you have a very good chance at dyeing your synthetic curly wig with RIT synthetic dye without altering the curl pattern. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, I would suggest, just like if you were dyeing your real hair, to do a patch test. It's not the easiest thing to do, but usually the back of the wig can't be seen unless it's very short, and if you're using curls anyway, then more than likely they're gonna be dense. So you can cut a strand or two out of the very back of the wig and try testing it in the water first to see how the curl pattern does and how the color may turn out. I didn't use a ton of dye, so the purple was a little lighter than this wig turned out. I used a lot more dye for this wig and I kept it in a lot longer. Again, if you watch the information video that I have about RIT dye, then it is going to explain how much dye you should use. RIT dye's website is fabulous. They have all the information that you need. They've got a FAQ section and they have videos too if you're interested in that. Also, keep in mind for them that they are dyeing fabric and they don't necessarily have anything about dyeing wigs or synthetic hair on their site. That's why I created this video. So yeah, if you found this video useful or entertaining at any point, it would be much appreciated if you would like it or even put a comment down below just letting me know what you thought. If you have a full curly wig and you happen to try this out and you get a different result or even the same result or a better result, a result that you're very happy with or even one that you're kind of disappointed with, please share it below so that anyone reading in the comments below will have some more information, even more than I was able to give. Anyone who has experience with this, that would be amazing if you had any other pointers or tips. On my Instagram page, I have story highlights and Insta stories that often give tips and tricks for wig wearing when it comes to cosplay and caring for your wigs and storing your wigs and things like that. So if you're interested, please head on over to my Instagram page and go ahead and follow me there. Let's be friends and hopefully I can help you out with some of my tips and tricks there. Yeah, and also if you're into anything other than wigs and you just wanna see some really cool cosplays, you can go ahead and follow me and I've got some of that on there too. And before I go, I have another, another disclaimer for you. My first choice is not to necessarily dye your wig. It is a lot of work. Just doing this video alone was like a ton of work and they weren't even full on like wigs or anything like that. So my advice to you would be to always try to find the color that you need in the wig style that you want so that you don't have to do a bunch of work on top of the cosplay that you have to create in order to get 
the color that you need, especially if you're running under crunch and you may not have enough time to properly assess the colors or the shades and you don't want anything to happen to ruin your wig. But you always have rich synthetic dye to fall back on if something happens similar to my situation where you may receive a different color or you can't find what you need. Again, if I were to give further advice and you want to dye a wig because you can't find the color that you need, then you should purchase a blonde or platinum wig or as light as you can possibly get because the color is going to deposit faster and you're gonna get a richer color deposit. I basically just wanna cosplay and share my cosplay successes with you guys, so I hope this was helpful. And again, thank you so much for watching my video. Until the next time, I hope you guys have a great weekend and many cosplay adventures. Bye. Oh, and if you've been keeping up with WandaVision, you're gonna love my next video. Next week, I'm gonna show you how I make the headpiece that Scarlet Witch wears in the comics while being part of the X-Men. So you know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> so stay tuned and come and join me next week for that video and I'll see you guys later. That's, that's, that's not what I was supposed to say. Whew, 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 so hot.